Red Sugimori. Got your message before your previous battle with Coach Shroom. Look, I, I know it's been a long time, but I think it's about time we had that chat you mentioned, don't you? Bit late there, detective. Late? Look, I, I know it's been a while I was supposed to come by before, but... Detective, you had your chance to talk to Mr. Sugimori. That chance is gone. He's no longer in Draft League City. Mr. Wanzi? The very same. Did you really think I was going to stay away for this long? Did you really think that I didn't have a plan? That I was sucked away into Cobacon against my wishes? No. That was always the plan. Unfortunately, your meddling pulled me back before I was ready. But as you know, Draft League City's kinda gone to shit, hasn't it, detective? Well, yeah, that's what I'm trying to sort out. Well, you're not gonna get that from me. I'm not here to help you, detective. I'm not your friend, I'm not Coach Shroom's informant. I'm the king of this wasteland. <laughs> I'm not interested in helping you get to the bottom of any kind of mysteries anymore. What the hell happened to you over there? <laughs> Nothing happened to me, detective. This was the plan all along. Alright, Mr. Wanzi, now you listen close. I'm not in Draft League City no more. I had to get out of there when everything went to hell in a handbasket. But I'm watching over things from afar. We're not here to make things worse, we're here to make things better. That was always the plan, weren't it? You say we. Who do you mean by that? Surely you're not talking about your little stooge coach shroom. Hey now, he's been doing his best for the good of everyone. For the greater good. <laughs> the greater good? What greater good? All you've been doing is going around accusing random innocent people of starting conspiracies, when the real conspiracy has been under your nose the entire time. I think it's probably time I go and pay your coach Shroom a visit, don't you? Well, you can do that, but I think it's time you learn he ain't alone out there. He is alone. He's All he's ever had is me and the council. And the council don't care about him anymore. What the hell is that supposed to mean? It means we've got informants. It means we have inside men. It means that Coach Shroom has a lot more enemies than he really thinks he does. And if you have any parting words before you disappear back to Cobacon for good, I would tell him to watch his back. Well, maybe I'll do just that. You know the state of the city right now. And if this is the way things are going to be, Mr. Wanzi, maybe you should watch yours. <laughs> you couldn't do anything if you tried. <laughs> I'm not the one who's trying. We'll see. Goodbye, Detective Stryker. Hope we never get to speak again. Yeah. Fine by me. Hello everyone, Shroom Raver here, and today we are in another league. It is the NBC Season 2, and we have our first battle of said league. It is against our old friend and rival, Mr. Wanzy Baynet, Alex himself. His links down in the description below. Make sure you check them out along with everyone else 
in the league. It is a brand new start. We are looking to get a good start on the competition. Our opponent has a team that is pretty nasty to go up against. Uh, he has to choose from uh, Annihilate, Hisuian Samurott, Darkrai, Sylveon, Iron Hands, Jirachi, Cryogonal, Sorina, uh, Colossal, and Gabite. Open Terror in this uh, league, and Alex's Terror choices are Annihilate, Cryogonal, and Gabite. Difficult one for us to go up against. Uh, the team that we are going to be bringing will hopefully be able to put in some work. Starting off with what I'm very excited to use, it is Iron Valiant. Uh, booster Energy for Special Attack this week. We have an Agility set with Moonblast, Shadow Ball, and Psychic. This can set up on uh, a number of his physical attackers. Uh, Annihilate with no boost can potentially be set up on if it isn't like Terra Poison, which I'm kind of expecting. Uh, the Samurott, uh, potentially the Jirachi, depending on the set. The Iron Hands, maybe Sarina, stuff like Gabite. A lot of his physical attackers can be set up on uh, for a late game sweep, which is the kind of role we're looking for Iron Valiant to fulfill here. Supporting that, we have Citrus Berry Raging Bolt. This is a very bulky special attacker, max special attack nearly with max HP. Bid into speed just to creep the creepers. Uh, Citrus Berry to give us a bit of health. We have Thunderclap, Draco, Meteor, Thunderbolt, and Calm Mind. Um, I was originally Specs because Electric goes really hard into Alex's team outside of that Gabite and potential uh, ground type terrors. But we can do a lot of work with Raging Bolt to uh, pick up some big chip damage to make way, excuse me, resituate myself, to make way for the Iron Vow. Next up is going to be Covert Cloak Ting Lu. Very physically defensive, max invested, 200 HP, 56 Spadef. Uh, this will allow us to live any one hit from the Sylveon and the Darkrai, in fact. Uh, Earthquake, Ruination, Heavy Slam, and Whirlwind going on there. Covert Cloak is super nice. Uh, this is effectively my counter to Jirachi uh, to stop that from doing any nasty things with uh, Paralysis and Flinching. Fourth member of the team is going to be Heavy Duty Boots Talonflame, max HP, max speed, making sure it can outrun that Darkrai. We have Brave Birds, Defog, U-Turn, and Roost going on there. Going to be useful for getting rid of the hazards to be set up by the likes of Ceaseless Edge Samurots or the Colossal or Gabite going for Stealth Rock. Uh, Brave Bird is pretty good neutrally into his team outside of the Rachi and the Colossal, who realistically I'm not going to be staying in or I'm going to be U-Turning out of there. Roost to keep us as healthy as Poss for as long as Poss. Uh, next is going to be our Terra Captain for the week. It is Assault Vest Terra Fairy Meloetta. Meloetta in general doesn't look amazing into his team, but Terra Fairy really gives it a new lease of life. Psyshock, Dazzling Gleam, U-Turn and Shadow Ball. We have max speed to tie with that Annihilate. Uh, 128 each into his special attack and special defense. Uh, this is allowing us to take any two hits from that Sylveon, who was a problem for me in Mox. Hit it back with Psyshock, get some big damage with Terra Dazzling Gleam, you turn out on the threats we don't want to take on. Shadow Ball pretty much just there for the Jirachi. Final member of the team is going to be your common or garden Sheer Force Life Orb, Tauros. Coming in with max attack, 216 speed, Jolly, uh, to be outrunning, I believe it is duh, 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 the Annihilate, I want to say. Uh, I think it's outspeeding now. Oh, the Jirachi. It's outspeeding the Jirachi. Earthquake, Close Combat, Zen Headbutt, and Body Slam. Good coverage, neutrally or super effectively across the entirety of Alex's team. So, that is what we are going to be running with today. Let's get into the battle and see how things play out, and more importantly, what Alex has decided to bring against us. Now, a quick note before we actually get into this match. Uh, the screen hopefully will be paused on that last, uh, that last screen. Um, we did this in person. Uh, I was hosting an event for Ellie, who's also in the league, her birthday. A bunch of us were at my house. Uh, we decided to have this battle in person. Uh, he was sitting just there behind me, sat at a table. Um, so his recording of his battle will actually be my side that I've sent him because he couldn't record his side. We did it in person. Um, so this is going to be sort of the more analytical approach going over my thought process. If you want to see sort of the more fun side, because Alex and I, we've been friends for a long time. We decided to have quite a fun battle, just kind of taking the piss out of each other while we did it. Uh, all of that sort of was recorded from his side. That'll be on his channel. If you want to see sort of the more fun side of it and how we are, how we were sort of bantering back and forth, go over to, oh, hit my mic. <laughs> go over to his side and make sure you check that out because it was a ton of fun to do. 
in person. Uh, but with that, let's get back into it. So, as you can see, Alex has decided to bring Hisuian Samurott, Darkrai, Sylveon, Annihilate, Gabite, and Iron Hands. A lot of what I was expecting to see. No Jirachi is nice. His Terra Captains in this game. Annihilate can go Terra Poison, and the Gabite can go Terra Ground. Expected on the Annihilate. Not quite expecting the uh, Gabite to show, but it did. We're just going to have to deal with it. Uh, my best lead is going to be Meloetta. Matches up pretty nicely to immediately Terra against most of his guys. So let's get into it and see how things played out. So, here we go, week one of MBC Season 2 against Alex, Wanzi Bennett, and the Solihull Skarmors. There he is in his drip. He is going to send out Gabite as his lead off the bat. I'm going to go with my Meloetta. Now, no reason for me not to just Terra off the bat and hit Dazzling Gleam. He doesn't have, looking at his team, too much that actively wants to switch in on a Terra Dazzling Gleam from Meloetta. So, I'm just going to go for it off rip and see how much damage we can do depending on what he wants to do against it. So straight off rip, we are going to go Terra Fairy. It's funny how in PPL Season 3 I barely terra my Ogre Pond and now it's just turn 1, battle 1, immediately go Terra Fairy. Uh, and try and fire off a nice and powerful Dazzling Gleam. This is bound to do a good amount of damage, but Alex has the same idea. Turn 1, we're both going Terra. Which is interesting. It means that he's not going to go Terra Poison on Annihilate, which means he doesn't have a Fairy Resist on this team. So already Iron Valiant is looking pretty good for that end game where I want him to try and shine. So, here's going to come the Dazzling Gleam. It's not going to kill because he's no longer weak to it, but it's going to do just about exactly half of this Gabite's health. He is going to go in return for the Terra Ground Earthquake. Now, I don't have any investment. This thing's decently powerful, so it does a good amount of damage. Uh, but, I get the feeling he's going to want to save this Gabite for something else later on down the line. Maybe to sack it off, maybe to get another big Terra Earthquake off. So my play is going to be going for U-turn on his predicted switch, potentially into the Sylveon. Or, I could just stay in and go for Dazzling Gleam. Because, like I say, it's looking like it's done about half. And, it's like I said before, he doesn't really have anything he actively wants to switch into this. So, it's going to be either U-turn or Dazzling Gleam. So Alex is going to get on out of there with his Gabites, and he is going to go into his Sylveon right about now. Best thing to take a uh, Dazzling Gleam, and as it is, that's what I go for. So, Dazzling Gleam is going to come in on this Sylveon and do basically nothing. He's looking very invested uh, on HP at least, and potentially he's more of a defensive set. Now that means I'm not really fearing a Specs Hyper Voice. I'm going to just go for Psyshock. I really need to keep this uh, Sylveon manageable. I need to keep it under 50% as often as I can in case he has Wish. So I'm just going to actually stay in and go for Psyshock, not fearing anything he can do to me. So here comes the Psyshock. As you'll see, that's going to come in and do not a great amount of damage. Uh, he is going to go for the Baton Pass, I guess expecting us to switch on out into something like maybe the Talon Flame or the Tauros. And he's going to Baton Pass out of there, take a good amount of damage. That Sylveon is now at that 50% mark where we need to keep him. And he's going to try and maneuver himself into a better position against my Meloetta. And he's going to do that by going into his Darkrai. Now, this is a problem. Uh, Sludge Bomb is very much a move he could be packing. Uh, and I don't think he's wanna, gonna, gonna wanna overpredict this early. He already has done with the Sylveon and it's left him at 50%. So he's kind of pressured to go for that Sludge Bomb. Uh, I have a very easy switch in in the form of my Ting Lu. So I'm gonna go for that and see if we can work it from there. And I can afford to play Ting Lu a bit more aggressively as a switch in now that I know that the Jirachi isn't here. So I'm gonna go into Ting Lu hitting the field for the first time this season. Get that Vessel of Ruin, lower the special attack. He is going to be pressured to go for that Sludge Bomb, the Covert Cloak, means we're not going to take a poison. Now, this is looking like a mighty free Earthquake to me. It's going to cause a lot of damage, and I don't really think he's going to want to stay in. He could be packing the Focus Blast, but realistically, with the Vessel of Ruin, it's not going to take me out, especially as we see he's not Life Orb. So I'm just going to click Earthquake here and wait for Alex to respond. Now, Alex is just going to get on out of dodge with Darkrai not wanting to risk it, and he is going to go into the horribly named Iron Hands. I'll take damage on this with Earthquake, but great prep on Alex's part, he does have the Air Balloon, so my Earthquake is not going to do anything to this Pokemon whose nickname I will not say. I won't do it. I'm, I'm, just, I'm just not going to do it. I'm just not. But 
We now have to deal with a balloon iron hands. I don't want to take any massive damage on my uh, on my moose here, on my Tin Lu. It'll probably take the hit, but I really want to keep it around as a good switch in to a multitude of things on Alex's team. So my best play here is to go back into my Meloetta to try and sponge a hit, see what he's going to do. Um, if I can live a hit, great. I can get another Dazzling Gleam off. Um, and if not, we're just going to have to work it from there. So, calling back Ting Lu, we are indeed going to go into Everdream, the Terra Fairy Meloetta, once again hitting the field. Alex is going to make a really nice play here, go for the Vault Switch on the ground type, knowing I'm going to switch on out. And once again, he's going to put himself into a better position, getting some good early initiative with a combination of Baton Pass and Vault Switch. And now back in comes the Sylveon. Um, this is problematic. Like, I can stay in and just go for side shot. Or at this point, as you'll see, U-turn is going to be the play. Um, I am going to get out of there. There is still actually that option that he could be uh, choice specs. He could be a very bulky spec set. So I was a bit worried about doing this because specs Sylveon really ruined me in Mox. And realistically, Talonflame here is the only thing I've got that actively wants to take that hit. So Talonflame is going to come in, hit the field, as he goes for Wish. Now this means he's definitely not Specs, which is good, but also it means that he is a bulky Wish Sylveon, which is bad. So, now I have to decide whether I want to Brave Bird him or U-turn, and try and again maintain him below 50%. The Wish is not going to make that easy though. Now, he is going to reveal the Protect here, which is mighty unfortunate. Uh, that's going to stop me from getting any Brave Bird damage. But now we know, Baton Pass, Wish, where? Baton Pass, Wish, Protect. That last voice, that last voice, can't speak today. That last move is going to be Hyper Voice, it just is. Uh, but that means that I really don't fear him with my Talonflame. So I'm going to stick in here and just start spamming Brave Bird. Psych, I went for U-turn. Didn't see that coming, did you? Uh, I was kind of anticipating him to want to get out of there and get a better matchup, maybe into like the Gabite or something. Uh, but now I have to pick something to switch into Sylveon. And looking at my team, there's not really much that wants to take the Hyper Voice, even if he's not invested. So I'm going to go into Meloetta, kind of pseudo sacking it here. Uh, but he is once again going to go for Baton Pass. Alex is really playing this very well, getting a lot of initiative on me and wearing down my Mons where he can, because what he can do now is just bring right back in that Darkrai and pressure me even more and force me into the 50-50 of is he just going to take out my Meloetta or is he going to try and predict the switch into Ting Lu and try and land a Focus Blast? And it's going to be the Darkrai that comes in. You know, outside of Scarfers uh, in the form of Samurott or Annihilate, um, this is the only thing that outspeeds my Meloetta. And like I say, now I have to make this decision. Is he going to overpredict? Or is he just going to try and take me out? Now, I'm just going to stay in and go for the Dazzling Gleam. I was already sacking Meloetta to the Sylveon, in a way. But he is going to go for Sludge Bomb. And unfortunately, that is Meloetta gone. And Wanzi Bayonet is going to draw first blood with Darkrai, taking out my Meloetta. But now I can go into my Ting Lu. Now, I do not fear anything that this Darkrai is going to go for onto me. Uh, like I say, a Focus Blast, it won't kill because I'm just that tanky. Uh, I was considering what I want to do here. Do I want to Earthquake for significant chip damage onto something? But if he goes into Iron Hands, that's a problem. Heavy Slam was also something I was considering just in case he wants to go into the Sylveon. Ruination is overall my best middle ground play to get some nice consistent chip onto whatever he wants to go into. But it turns out, unfortunately for me, that is going to be his Gabite. So this uh, is not going to do as much chip to something as I would like. Ruination is going to come in and take him down to around about 25%. But that means he is very much in range of an Earthquake. Now Alex is going to go for some last gasp chip damage with Earthquake of his own onto my Ting Lu. It's going to do a very respectable amount, but nowhere near enough. And we're actually going to go for a Heavy Slam. It was covering the switch into the Balloon um, Iron Hands, or indeed the Sylveon. But either way, Alex's Terra Captain is going to go down, and the first KO of our season is actually going to go to Ting Lu. So now in comes the Hisuian Samurott. Now, uh, a Razor Shell or something. Um, we will live this hit. We won't live it well, but uh, we are going to at least tank the hit with Ting Lu and try and get some really meaningful damage onto Hisuian Samrot with Ruin Nation. Uh, that will also be nice if he overpredicts and goes for a Ceaseless Edge. We'll be getting out of that exchange pretty, pretty well. 
So in comes the Razor Shell. As you'll see, we are barely going to live that hit, which is nice. We're going to get a nice Ruination off. 50% damage onto the Samurott is great. Uh, and, you know, we're at about 10%, just over. Maybe there's a chance that we can live a Ceaseless Edge if he's not choiced. Uh, he might want to go for it, thinking he can pick us off. Um, but Tinglu has kind of run its race here. There's not too much more it's going to be doing. It's outsped by everything. So I am just going to stay in here and click Earthquake and hope that we can live. Now Alex is going to go for Ceaseless Edge and unfortunately that is just too powerful for us to live. So Tinglu goes down but it's done a really nice job. It's got some significant chip damage and it's got a KO. Unfortunately there are spikes up on our side now and that is not something that I want to be dealing with. But speaking of things that people don't want to deal with, Alex doesn't really want to deal with, um, with this guy, with Raging Bolt. Now, I kind of misplay here, kind of forgetting that he doesn't have an electric community anymore. The play here every time was to go for Thunderbolt. I didn't want to go for Thunderclap, uh, just in case he wanted to get cheeky and switch into the Sylveon. I actually go for Draco Meteor, which makes even less sense because he'd be immune. What I should have done was just middle grounded it with Thunderbolt. But we're going to go for Draco and see what we can do. Now Alex is going to go for another Ceaseless Edge, that's going to take us to just above half, he gets up his second layer of spikes. Raging Bolt here, going to go for that Draco Meteor, we are going to hit, and that is very much a dead Hisuian Samurott, no shot of it living that whatsoever. Thunderbolt was the safe play, but it's worked out for us in the end. So back in comes the Sylveon, um, I don't want to be taking a Hyper Voice here, um, and I really only have one switch, I need my two big fast attackers for the late game, so my only play here really is to go back into my uh, Talonflame and try and whittle this thing down, and again, we need to keep it around that 50% magic number mark. So, we're going to see if we can do that. In comes Pontiac, going to come in here and pretty much tank this Hyper Voice. He's not Specs, he's not particularly invested, I don't think. So, we're going to be fine there, and realistically, I have many jobs here. I need to keep myself healthy, I need to pick my moment to get rid of those spikes, but most importantly, consistent Brave Bird damage. It's going to come in and take him to just above half, which is unfortunate. He here is going to go for the Wish. Not what I wanted to see because I'm not doing a lot of damage, but pretty sure he's going to want to protect here. And even if he doesn't, it doesn't really matter because Hyper Voice is going to take us to where we were. I'm going to click Roost, anticipating the Protect that, as you'll see, is what's going to come in. So he's going to go for Protect. I'm going to go for the Roost. And we're pretty much back to square one. It's a little bit of a stalemate between Talonflame and Sylveon. Both of us back at full. But it looks like he's pretty much content on staying in here and trying to whittle down my Talonflame. I'm going to go for one more Brave Bird and try and pick my moment to get rid of those hazards. So here's the Brave Bird. As you'll see, it's doing around about 25%, which is not great damage. In comes the Hyper Voice from the Sylveon. And it's right about now that I think, you know what, let's just go Defog. So we're going to go for it. Doesn't make the aggressive switch into Annihilate, which is good. We get rid of those spikes. They are no longer available to him. And Hyper Voice is going to come in from Sylveon. Now, like I say, I need this Brave Bird damage. Um, so I am just going to go for it once again and try and take him down below that 50% marker. And here it is, Brave Bird, once again, and that is going to take him down below that 50%, and Alex here, very crucially, is going to over-predict. Imagining that I was going to roost to maintain health on Tanflame, he's going to Baton Pass, and now he is below 50% when he next comes in. But it's going to be a threat on his side. It is going to be the Darkrai that comes in. Now, I'm pretty happy to stay in and go for U-Turn. It will allow us to scout whether he is, in fact, Scarfed Darkrai. And realistically, Talonflame has done its job. Good thing too, because he is Scarfed Darkrai. Talonflame is going to go down. It's done a decent job. It's kind of controlled the Sylveon a little bit, which is exactly what I needed. But now I can go into Taurus. Knowing that he is Scarfed into an unstab move, he will not be taking out my Taurus from here. And I can start trying to dish out some heavy damage. Now that we know that he's Scarfed Darkrai, I was fairly certain he would want to preserve it for the Iron Valley. So he is going to switch out into his Annihilate, but I see it coming. I went for the middle ground Zen Headbutt, and we do huge damage on the Switch. Nice prediction, if I do say so myself, but it's scary because he has a Salak Berry. Now he's at plus one speed, um, and though he doesn't know it, he now outspeeds my entire team. This is a problem. However, given that he is a Pinch Berry, I'm pretty sure he's gonna be running Drain Punch 
over close combat, uh, so that he doesn't just immediately get revenged. Knowing that, I live a Drain Punch, which means I'll be able to go for a subsequent Zen Headbutt, tank the hit, and take him out. So here comes the Drain Punch. As you'll see, we are able to barely live that hit, which is great. He is not going to get back enough health to live this Zen Headbutt from the Tauros. And we miss. That's unfortunate. That's really bad. Um, yeah, not great. Now, as you'll see, he's actually going to go for Bulk Up here. And I'll talk about this as these turns go. Because, as you'll see, we're going to go for a subsequent Zen Headbutt with Tauros. And we're going to miss again. Now... As you know, Alex was behind me this whole time doing his side of the battle, and he immediately said, like, he's a good man, and he immediately said, that's not how I want this game to go. That should have been a KO for you. Um, so he goes for Rage Fist here, just to make sure that old Mulligan is going to be able to go for the Zen Headbutt. Uh, which was, you know, he didn't have to do that, but Alex and I have both been burned by hacks badly enough before that he was just like, I'm, I don't want the first game of the season to go down like that. Which was a very gracious thing of him to do. He didn't have to. I didn't ask him to. Um, you can go again to his side of the channel. I implore you to do so to check out what happened there. But the upshot of it is Taurus is still alive. We get the KO on Annihilate. And in comes the Iron Hands. And it turns out he's packing Fake Out. I thought I'd be able to get a nice bit of chip with Zen Headbutt. But the Fake Out comes in from the Iron Hands. And that is actually going to dictate how the rest of this game goes. Because I am just going to go into Iron Valiant. It's the only chance I have now for Iron Valiant. We are very much... This is the end game. Iron Valiant either wins or loses here. I have to kind of gamble on the fact that he does not pack the coverage for Iron Hands. Given that he's revealed Fake Out and Volt Switch, I'm hoping that he just has powerful physical dual stab left on the hands, neither of which is going to take out Iron Valiant with its very respectable physical bulk. And I'm really hoping that seeing Booster Energy Special Attack is going to scare him out. So, Iron Valiant is going to hit the field for the first time this season. The Booster Energy goes off, and much to Alex's surprise, I'll have you know, it's Special Attack. What I'm hoping is that he's not packing Heavy Slam, and he's just going to switch on out into Sylveon. That is what I need. This is my one and only chance to set up an agility. Um, because from there, it seems pretty likely that Iron Valiant might be able to take this home. And Alex is going to play it out as I'd hoped. Scared out by my booster special attack Valen, he is going to hard switch into his Sylveon. This is great because it allows us the agility. And now we outspeed his Scarf Darkrai. And we have the booster in special attack. Now, I've seen Alex's spreads. The Moonblast KO onto Fernando here is a roll. It's a roll in my favour, but it is a roll nonetheless. If we don't get this Moonblast roll, he is going to take us out, invested or not. So in comes the Moonblast, and we are going to get that favourable roll. It was about 68-ish, 69-ish percent in my favour. Nice. But we are going to get that, and now it is just Darkrai and Iron Hand left on his side. Now, the Darkrai has no shot of living this hit. He basically has to gamble on us being basically like min speed. Uh, and not prepping for a Scarf Darkrai. So, that is going to be his next move. In comes the Darkrai. He is going to have to lock in on Sludge Bomb, but little does he know, we have the speed to outrun a Scarf Darkrai from this range. In comes the Moonblast, and that is going to take out the Darkrai. Down it goes. It's been a thorn in my side, but we've finally gotten rid of it. Now it is Iron Hands versus the World, and this happened last time in PPL, and it nearly went very badly for us. Now, Iron Hands is incredibly bulky, like we've seen them live these hits before, but we do still have Raging Bolt in the back, so hopefully, fingers crossed, we're going to be okay. We're going to lock in, he's going to go fake out, do a nice solid little chunk of damage, but it is unfortunately for him not going to be enough, nearly enough. We, once again, are going to lock in on that Moonblast and just hope that he is not a very specially bulky set built to live this kind of hit. So. Here we go, Moonblast gonna come in and completely one-shot the Iron Hands from there. Yes, indeed, the air balloon pops, doesn't matter, down goes the Iron Hands. Owen Valiant cleaning up the game with three kills and that is gonna be the game. So yeah, good first game, really good first game. Um, a, few, a fair few talking points to go over there, you know. Um, the turns with uh, Annihilate versus uh, the Tauros, did that matter? In the grand scheme of things, maybe not. I don't know that he actually had coverage on Annihilate um, to deal 
with my uh, my own Valiant, you know? Um, if he'd have just straight up taken me out from there, uh, the Tauros, then Iron Valiant has a fair to middling chance to live the next hit unless he's like gunk shot and he wasn't Terra Poison. So, you know, yeah, difficult to say whether he would have been able to do it. Um, he would have had to have got the bulk up up anyway in order to guarantee Oko my Valiant, like a, a, a Rage Fist at 100 base power from that uh, Annihilate was not taking out Iron Valiant. It's, it's bulky enough to live that hit. So, yeah, you know, it's it's debatable as to whether we still would have won that game if he'd have taken the initiative. Uh, but Alex is a good man, and he didn't. He said he was said at the time, you know, he didn't want the game to go that way. He didn't want anyone to win that way. Uh, which, you know, that was his choice, and that was up to him. Upshot of it is, we do win our first game of the season, which is fantastic. It's great to get off to a winning start. Uh, next week, things don't get any easier. We're going up against someone I've never faced before. From an old rival to a new face, we go up against Cahoots, um, who has a very threatening team <laughs> that I'm not looking forward to building against, but we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. Is this going to help us get a footing in Draft League City? I don't know. I hope that Wanzi can snap out of whatever was affecting him in the PPL and try and come over to the good sides. We'll have to see what role Cahoots is going to play in all of this. But that's the story for another time. I'm going to get out of here. I've rammed on for far too long. So my final thank you to you all for watching. And I guess with that, I will see you next time. Laters.